What is going on, everyone? Thank you guys for tapping into today's podcast. My name is Ryan Prendes, and this is my business partner. What's up, y'all? I'm Nestor Sanchez, or you may know me as Masternode One. Thank you guys for hopping on to today's podcast. And we are the master nodes. Again, thank you guys for tapping in. Much appreciated as always. Make sure you guys stay till the end to hear about some additional resources that we're going to provide y'all to stay a little bit more in tune with cryptocurrency. But without further ado, I would like to present our guest speaker today. We have Rebecca, or also known as Your Finance Fundamentals. I'm Rebecca from Your Financial Fundamentals. You can find me on Instagram. I uh, want to thank you guys very much for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I'm looking forward to to talking more about crypto and finance. Uh, and uh, uh, you can also find me on TikTok and YouTube under uh, Your Money Fund Mentor, the dollar sign fun and mentor. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you for tapping in, Rebecca. Appreciate you. So, Rebecca, tell us a little bit about yourself and like your background, where you come from, and what you do. Sure. Well, I've uh, I'm a financial administrator and human resources director. Uh, I work for the federal government. Um, I'm actually from Southern California originally, but I am considered an East Coast girl now. Um, I've been doing this job for about 20, 25 years. And, uh, but what I've been doing now recently is, well, officially recently is financial mentoring. Um, I've been doing it unofficially for about the last 20 years for my staff and my friends and colleagues and such. Um, and just in the last year that with their support and motivation, they've got me started doing this, uh, this gamut. So I'm pretty excited about it. So that's amazing. You're basically using this platform to help educate people on their finances. Um, do you have anything like specific that you like to go over? Do you, I know we're like really into crypto. Do you have any specialties yeah, for yourself? Absolutely. Well, it, it, I don't have any particular niche that I focus on. I focus more on the person. I have enough of a background and, and I, I'm all self-taught, by the way. I'm not, I don't have a degree in finance. Uh, I actually studied animal science of all things when I was in college. Um, but I have a, a head for numbers. I love helping people uh, learn finance and understand finance. And well, they just don't teach it. And thankfully, I've, I've had this opportunity to grow and expand my own knowledge and um, been helping friends. I pay my success forward. So pretty much anything that, that anyone is um, wanting to improve, I find that investing is the big one. Nobody knows enough about investing. Um, and cryptocurrency really plays into that. Uh, and, and it's really been helping me because I don't know much about crypto and you guys have been so fantastic helping me and learning um, so that I have a better understanding. Um, but that's pretty much what I try to do is to help everybody that comes to me, to, what their focus is. Yeah, we definitely need more people like you just because or more people like us, just because like what I've noticed, and I'm pretty sure you could attest to this because we have we've had a conversation on this before is our current school system fails yes. terribly with being and teaching people how to be financially literate. And so the financial literacy part in schools is not emphasized at all whatsoever. So I know a lot of people that are coming out of high school that aren't, that don't know anything about finance. They don't know from shocking. anywhere from- it is shocking. Yeah, Yes, it is. They don't know a lot of things from, you know, opening up something as simple as a savings account to what is life insurance or what is a Roth IRA or what is cryptocurrency. <laughs> you know, they don't know anything. From, from the human resources standpoint, they don't know how to fill out a W-4. I mean, that that in and of itself is like the first thing that should be taught. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. It's it's a shame. Mm -hmm. Um. So, a lot of teachers expect parents to learn, but if parents don't know it either, how do they teach their kids? Exactly, exactly. So shout out to you. Uh, another question we actually had for you is, what are some of your favorite assets and why? Oh, great question. Great question. Um, especially starting out new and, and you don't know much about investing, but you're excited about it. Uh, you want to diversify. You, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. 
Um, specifically, I would say index funds, but also when you're investing with crypto, I tend to encourage stable coins until you have a better grasp of the other coins that are available out there. And of course, I do like Ethereum. What can I say? <laughs> Got it. Love it. Um, I love that you're saying, you know, start off with stable coin, just kind of build up like a savings account. And then once you understand these cryptocurrencies, once you understand why they're, they work, why they're better, what they do, then that's when you can go ahead and, hey, move some of that money over um, into Absolutely. things that um, aren't going to just uh, inflate in value like the, the U.S. dollar. You know, and what's crazy, actually, sorry to cut you off, that just came to mind because you said it, uh, keyword savings account. I feel like I'm going to start using that word more just because like I tried avoiding it before because I don't like the traditional banking system. Uh, I don't either. Yeah. And, and I don't like that word because when I say savings account, a lot of people think, oh, you know, savings account. I'm going to throw my money into Bank of America or Chase or Wells Fargo into a savings account. But really, a savings account doesn't necessarily have to be with the traditional banking system. A savings account can be with cryptocurrency. I feel like when you are your own bank uh, as the as essentially what cryptocurrency does it unbanks you from normal banks and helps you create your own i think now a savings account has a different standard than it did 50 years ago yeah and when you think about it, some people can't even access traditional savings accounts so what do they do they put it in a shoebox they put it under their bed they put it all the, in all these different things that aren't safe. If someone comes in there and they they see a shoebox full of cash, they're going to take it, right? And there's no way to trace that. There's no protection. There's no anything, really. If you have it in cryptocurrency, guess what? It's backed by blockchain technology. It's yes. backed by cryptography. If there, there are certain steps you can take to make sure that even if somebody steals your wallet, well, guess what? You can have a backup. So it's exactly. a lot safer than when you were to just do it in uh, cash. And then, like I said, some people, if you have a felony, guess what? You can't open a bank. What is that? If you're undocumented, you can't open a bank. If you're from a different country that's not the U.S., guess what? You cannot access U.S. dollars. So if, you know, like they're in there Brazil. There are drastic and, limitations. Exactly. And like in Brazil, they're using U.S. dollar, UST, as actually sort of an investment because their dollar depreciates so bad that technically against the u.s dollar it's an investment so yeah. it's crazy i think like these are different avenues that nobody had access to before and now anybody in the world with a little bit of internet that you can get from starbucks now you can access a whole array of DeFi, decentralized finance gaming all these different things that you could have never had before well that is definitely something that's that i was thinking about earlier in, when we were talking that cryptocurrency 20 or 30 years ago was something that was on Star Trek. Like you just didn't comprehend it. And the thing that I like about crypto now is that we don't know how far it will take us, but we know it will take us far. And, I, you know, they want to put a colony on Mars. People think that's crazy. 30 years ago, guys, that was like, that was tech, that was uh, Star Trek, <laughs> straight up. Now, look, they're going to have a colony there at some point, and they're going to need some sort of financial mechanism. Well, you have crypto. Mm -hmm. And that is something that will now be, forget global, it's universal. It's universal. Yeah, because it's not like they can load $5 no. trillion dollars worth of cash onto a spaceship. <laughs> and, and, send and that. why would you and why would you yeah. and the blockchain is just you know it, it, that's what's so great too is um uh you could now protect yourself you can protect your house you can you can put your title into an nft and you know that no one is going to steal that thing or they're going to try but they're not going to have success because of this technology and it's scary new technology scares everybody especially old people but I think as this continues to grow, it's going to be the most beneficial thing that we will have seen in, in in modern times. Yeah. So hitting on that point, you're saying a lot of people are scared of technology. Um, why do you think people are kind of scared to invest their money in general? Because you've worked hard for that money. 
and nothing is worse than it it's gone and and right now with the way the market is and and there's risk factors it's gone it you're you're afraid you're never going to get it back and the reality is if you look back especially with the stock market the stock market will go back up it always does it it honestly it does better than it normally would um but it is terrifying. And it's also terrifying because you don't know what you don't know. And it, it goes back to the education statement. If they were teaching it more in schools, there would be less of a, of a scare factor here. You know, it's like you said, the banking system bank takes your money. You're never going to get it back. And, yeah. and I think that's really the big factor here. Even in a traditional aspect, though, like with the stock market, a lot of people are like, oh, it's going to go back up. It's going to go back up. And then you have a recession and it just tanks completely. Even, although that tank may happen, you're going to see retracements back up to where it was before the recession. Like it's it's quite literally, you look at a chart, you zoom out from the, I guess, the sure. earlier date that they started recording uh, stock data to today. You'll see even with the biggest dips, the Great Depression, the um, 2008 recession, like even with those dips, you could see it retraces back and keeps going up even higher. You know, it just, it just takes time, you know, and that's what a lot of people don't have in a podcast we recently did with our friend, uh, Tyler Dorsey. One of the biggest pieces of advice that he would give was to be patient. You know, a lot of people, yes, patience, you know? And so because of that, um, you know, you find yourselves in, these wrecks, you know, and that's especially when you first start investing, when you first start investing, you don't know what you're doing. So, you know, you're not patient, you take your money out. And it's always the same thing. You put your money in, it goes down, you're like, Oh, I'm gonna put my either put my money in some more, it keeps going down. Or you're like, Okay, at one point, you're like, I I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm gonna pull out my money. As soon as you pull out, the market takes off. And you're like, Oh, you know, I would have just kept my money in it. But and so it, it just, the four tools of finance, you know, it's 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 uh, direct deposit, dollar cost averaging, and really it's dollar cost averaging because you're it doesn't matter what it is, you just keep throwing money in, keep throwing money in. But yeah, I, it is true. You take it out, and then like, oh, dang it, now I'm gone. I, I, I've just lost all my money here. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely, so, uh, absolutely. But about investing. Uh, so how did you uh, first start investing? Wait, before we get into that, I actually did okay. want to hit on something that Rebecca did say about fear. And it's like, okay, they're scared that they're going to lose their money. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy to me is I don't think people understand that if they don't invest, well, guess what? You're losing your money already. So yes. it's either you invest your money um, and potentially lose money or you don't invest your money and you lose money for sure. So it's literally yeah, up to you, whichever way you want to take it. Well, yeah. You know that that I I have I have one client, um, and, and they're friends of mine. I've been helping them for a while, and uh, during the 2020, went right after COVID, and the market dropped significantly. Um, you know, when they first started, they didn't know anything in in what should be known in terms of financial literacy and investing. Um, she took their money and invested it when the market dropped. They had an 86% return in, in, in 1920 or 2020 rather. And I'm like, of course, I say I, I'm up for adoption because even I'm not that good. And but they have consistency, even with the market down, they're still doing well. And that's just tools that I've taught them. They the biggest one they'll tell you is. The, they took the fear factor out. You have to take the emotion out. I like to tell people, especially those who are really afraid and will say, um, you know, I'm waiting till the market's better. And like, well, said no millionaire ever. When the market goes down, that's when millionaires make money. Yeah. But the one thing I have said is if you pretend it's not your money, okay, that, that money you're going to invest, pretend it's your mom and dad, pretend it's your brother and your sister, pretend it's taxpayers, all of a sudden, you're going to be thinking a lot more clearly. You're going to have a better focus. You're going to be able to say, you know what, this is a good investment. Even if it goes down, I know it will have a great return later on. You take that emotional value out, man, I'll tell you what, risk is never an issue anymore. And and my friend proved it. And my, my friend proved it. And she keeps proving it time and time again. 
So, you know, in terms of the scare, don't be afraid. It'll be just fine. Flip the light on. There's no scary monsters. Yeah. Even at the I Am Academy conference uh, that me and Nestor had gone to, I interviewed quite a few multimillionaires. And a lot of them said the same thing. Emotions, you, you can't let emotions control you. Because once you let emotions control you, that's it. You're out of the game. You know, right now, Absolutely. trading and investing is 90% emotions and 10% analysis. You eliminate your emotions, you're pretty much all the way there. You know, because if not, sometimes you're in a trade or, or you're in an investment you're and you're thinking too much. You're, you're saying, oh, you know, I entered in at this price and it's currently at this price. I'm losing money. Maybe I should get out of it. But if they just stick with the process, stick with what their strategies were, 90% of the time they're going to see it pays off, you know, unless their strategy is, is, is completely trashed, then that's a different story. You know, you can't really help. Anyone. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but it's all math at the end of the day, it's all math. You look at any charts, uh, we have what's called a Fibonacci scale and the Fibonacci oh, yeah. scale is quite literally math. And, and, and you look at it in the ratios and that's what people, when people are looking at charts and looking at and their investments there when they see certain numbers they they don't know it but really those numbers are programmed into their head and those ratios are what's kicking in it's not them with the emotions well their emotions they're letting it control them but really it's it's math that's all it is at the end of the day it's math it's something's computered in our heads as humans to react a certain way off of certain price zones and we get lost because of emotions, because we're seeing certain things, we're not analyzing it correctly because we're letting emotions consume and control us. Absolutely. And I, I, do I also, I, I, I call it a puzzle. You say math, I've had, you know, people will give me the excuse, I'm not good in math. Okay, make it a puzzle. It's the same thing. Fibonacci, it's a puzzle, same thing. And you're right. If you're, you're, your emotions will just get the best of you. And I did also want to give like my testimonial in terms of like uh, how you're saying your friend got into um, the markets only knowing the basics, really. Right. She didn't understand Fibonacci. She didn't understand retracements. But but just knowing the basics got her 86 percent return. And uh -huh. I was the exact same way when um, that 2020 thing happened, like four or five months. When before, that thing happened. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that thing, the whole it's pandemic, whatever. COVID. <laughs> we don't we don't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. But that pandemic. That pandemic. <laughs> nah, I call it a pandemic, right? Because I made bands on that in that pandemic. So um it's all depending on where you are. And like four or five months before that pandemic happened, well, I was learning. And I just learned the basics. I didn't take any specialized classes. I didn't go to Harvard. I just took a few basic courses on what investing is. And the whole basis of investing, I say this all the time, is literally buy low, sell high. So why would you wait till the market gets better, right? It's not low then. Why would you do that? Right. And if you just know the basics, well, guess what? You can capitalize off those lows. You can capitalize when everybody's scared. And because everybody's scared, well, guess what? They're not scared. Money don't make no money. So There's... because they're scared, well, that's that's a better opportunity for you. YG said it best. <laughs> so the next question we wanted to ask you, Rebecca, is how did you get started investing? My grandfather actually started talking to me about investing. Now, you have to understand, my grandfather was born in 1908, and he remembers the Great Depression and the crash of the stock market. He saw somebody jump out the window, and he was in San Francisco. He was in San Francisco, and and I remember because I was in, I know I was in high school in 1986 when we had that Black Monday or whatever it was, where it was the next big huge drop and everybody flipped out. And he came in. He was visiting and uh, visiting me and came and talked to our history class, and. You know, everybody loved it because here's this old guy telling stories and he thought he was king, you know, and he's the one that really got me started. He's he is my financial mentor. He got me started um, and he told he would send me articles and he'd tell me what books to read. And then it became a drinking through the fire hose. There was just too much information. And I started creating my own kind of cliff notes. And what was important, what was basic, what what could get me to the next step 
I, not the next mile, but just the next step. Um, so really, I have to give all props to my granddad. He was the best. He was the best. You see, that's like picture perfect of what generational wealth is. Like, it's not about the money. Um, he just passed on a few books, a few cliff notes, a little bit of a change in mentality. And that's created this. And you are impacting the lives of hundreds of other people as well. So like, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's what it, exactly we're here for, right? I'm not here to make you a millionaire. I'm here to change your mind just a little bit, right? So that you can take that next step. And then that next step, I'm not worried about the mile, right? I'm worried yeah. about, okay, how are we going to continue to move forward so that um, there's no going backwards, right? Exactly. Exactly. Learn that wealth has nothing to do with money. Wealth has everything to do with the way you live your life. Financial wealth has everything to do with money. But if you live your life with wealth, the money will take care of itself. Absolutely. Some gems right off the bat. <laughs> one last question we're going to ask you for our future traders, our future investors out there. What is one good tip that you can give to them? Start now. Start now. Don't worry. You've got this. It's okay to be afraid, but don't let the emotions take over. You have enough mentors. You've got Nestor and Ryan. You've got me. You've got a ton of people. But start now. Don't wait. Because now you're losing you're losing time. Absolutely. And um, one of the things we always say is like time is more valuable than yes. the actual money. Because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, you can never be 20 again. You can never be 15 again. And if you start now, well, that's going to start working for you every single day of your life from then yeah. and that's what's Absolutely. amazing you're gonna make mistakes and the whole point of it is to make as little mistakes as you can along the way and you learn from those mistakes yeah compounding starts the day that yes. you start Com yes. and compounding is key because that's the difference between someone starting i don't know if you guys have seen this example where it was like i put into the s p 500 you know s p grows around you know a certain percentage every year uh, on average and so it's like uh, someone at 20 years old started with like $100 every month uh, versus someone with 30 years old started with $500 every month. Well, the one that started 10 years earlier is going to actually make more money in the long run because of that compound. He's going to compound that 10 year head start, although the person is investing way more than him starting off that 10 year head start is really going to make a difference because he's compounding. Even if it was just two years beforehand, doesn't matter. Compounding starts the day you start investing. You want to know something ironic? The one that's 20 years old or in his early twenties with the hundred bucks will be spending less money than that 30 year old putting in 500. Yeah. And they'll still end up with the same amount potentially, but the 20 year old spent less money and he's got even more ahead. So yeah. Yeah, you don't wait, don't wait, start now. You have to start now. And not only that for you tax purposes. The bar, trust me. Yeah, yeah. And not only that for tax purposes. home, it's cheaper. <laughs> for tax purposes, you actually would end up paying less in the long run because the long term uh -huh. capital gains instead of short term capital gains. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Utilize that Roth, people. <laughs> you don't you don't want to be looking for a fire extinguisher when the fire starts, basically, right? You don't you don't want to be doing that. You want to have it already ready, um, able to take out a fire. Yeah, that's correct. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, that kind of wraps up today's podcast. Thank you, everyone, for tapping in. Much appreciated, as always. A uh, shout out to our guest, Rebecca. Please follow her at Your Financial Fundamentals. Uh, remember to follow and subscribe to our social media accounts on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter, all at The Master Nodes. Our visual podcast experience can be found on YouTube, and our audio podcast experience can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and all your other favorite podcast sources. Remember to visit our website, www.themasternodes.com, and subscribe to our email list to receive the latest and greatest cryptocurrency information. Now, Rebecca, anything you want to start say, you know, uh, kind of to end off the show, uh, to leave uh, and leave, let people know before you go. Yes. First, I want to thank you both very much. You already know I love you both dearly. You guys are fantastic. So keep doing up. Pay your success forward. I, I, I am so proud of you guys. 
You can find me on Instagram at Your Financial Fundamentals. You can find me on YouTube at uh, Money Fun or M, uh, Money Sign F U N Mentor, and you can find me on my website at www your financial fundamentals.com. And yes, I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And we also have a discord for you guys. If you guys want to join that it's full of a community of people who want to make money of people who have been making money with a lot of different things. We have Rebecca on there. Um, yep. And it's just not just for cryptocurrency. It's people who will make money with NFTs, real estate, um, stocks, all that. And our whole point is to grow each other and grow as a community. And another thing we are doing, we have partnered with I Am Mastery Academy to bring you guys as much value as we can. And that can literally get you from zero to 100, wherever you want to go um, in terms of stocks, finances, um, high frequency trading, cryptocurrency, the whole nine yards. And obviously you're going to be on our team. So it's not just like, we're giving you to an education platform. We're going to be a part of it and we're going to help you develop as much as we can. As always, guys, we appreciate you being on and try your best to choose kindness. Yes, thank you guys for tapping in. Much appreciated as always and bless up. Here at the Master Nodes, we are not making any claims as to income you may earn. Before entering any agreement, please use caution and seek the advice of a professional advisor, such as attorney or financial advisor. Please ensure your own research is done before investing any money into the market.